The 16th century was a time of great change in the Netherlands. It was a period marked by burgeoning trade, innovative technologies, and a growing sense of national identity. At the heart of this transformation were the iconic windmills of Holland. These towering structures dotting the Dutch landscape were not merely picturesque elements of the countryside. They were, in essence, the engines of the Dutch Golden Age. Windmills powered a vast array of industries, from sawing timber and grinding grain to producing oil and draining the low-lying lands. These wind-powered wonders were integral to Dutch life. They enabled the Netherlands to reclaim land from the sea, transforming marshlands into fertile fields, and expanding the nation's territory. Windmills facilitated the production of goods, contributing significantly to the booming Dutch economy. The sight of their sails turning gracefully in the wind was a testament to Dutch ingenuity and their mastery over nature's forces. As the Netherlands grew in wealth and influence, so too did the importance of the windmill, a symbol of progress and prosperity. The reliance on wind power was not merely a matter of economic expediency, it reflected a deep-seated cultural connection to the natural world. The Dutch viewed the wind as a free and inexhaustible resource, a gift from God, and a symbol of their own indomitable spirit. The wind that propelled their ships across the globe, that drove their industries, and that literally shaped their land was a source of national pride and a symbol of their hard-won independence. Under the rule of King Philip II of Spain, the Netherlands found themselves embroiled in a bitter struggle for independence. The Dutch, fiercely Protestant, chafed under the yoke of Spanish Habsburg rule, which sought to impose Catholicism and centralize power. As tensions escalated, culminating in the Dutch revolt, Philip II looked for ways to quell the rebellion and replenish his coffers, drained by years of warfare. It was from this crucible of conflict that one of history's most outlandish taxes was born, the wind tax. The wind tax, levied in 1587, was not merely a tax on the windmills themselves, but on the very wind that powered them. The logic, flawed as it might seem in retrospect, went something like this. The Spanish crown viewed the wind as a resource that the Dutch were exploiting for their own economic gain, just as the Spanish crown taxed other resources, such as salt or minerals. They reasoned that the wind, harnessed by the Dutch, could also be subject to taxation. The wind tax, in the eyes of the Spanish, was a way to assert their authority over the rebellious provinces and extract much-needed revenue. They envisioned a system where windmill owners would be required to pay a fee based on the number of sales on their mills and the frequency of the wind. The more wind a mill harnessed, the more tax it would incur. This tax, they believed, would not only fill the Spanish treasury, but also serve as a stark reminder to the Dutch that their prosperity was contingent upon the favor of the Spanish crown. The very notion of taxing the wind struck the Dutch as not only absurd, but also a direct assault on their way of life. It was seen as a desperate attempt to extract funds from a people already burdened by war and oppression. The wind, in the Dutch mind, was a free and universal gift, not something to be commodified and controlled by any earthly power. It was akin to taxing the sun, the rain, or the very air they breathed. The audacity of the Spanish crown to even conceive of such a tax ignited a firestorm of opposition, further fueling the flames of the Dutch revolt.